most obvious feature of the sea lamprey is the uh, suction cup shaped mouth. We call it the oral disc. It's uh, just a, a perfectly round mouth. The sea lamprey mouth is completely lined and, and ringed with teeth. It has about 150 teeth inside that mouth and that allows them to really latch on and hold on to a prey fish. My name is Scott Meals. I'm a fish biologist with the U.S. Geological Survey stationed here at the Hammond Bay Biological Station in northern Michigan. The sea lamprey is an ancient jawless fish. It's, it's a very snake-like fish. A lot of people confuse them with eels because they do look very eel-like, but they're a completely different family. The sea lamprey are called the vampire of the Great Lakes because they attach and drink the blood of our native fish species here. They use their, their suction cup mouth to attach onto the side of the fish. They're able to create a, a suction force about seven times greater than your average household vacuum cleaner. And then they can also rasp into the side of the fish with the teeth that line that suction cup mouth. They'll stay attached to the prey fish uh, as long as that prey fish is healthy. They end up ultimately draining so much blood and, and juice from the fish that uh, they, they kill it. A single sea lamprey will kill about 40 pounds of fish prey uh, in its lifetime, which occurs in about an 18-month period. In Lake Huron behind us, there are anywhere from 80 to 150,000 parasitic sea lampreys swimming around right now. Probably the sea lamprey is one of, if not the most devastating species to uh, have invaded the Great Lakes. The sea lamprey actually swam or hitched a ride um, into the Great Lakes uh, through the canal system. So as the canal systems were being built to connect the Great Lakes to the East Coast to the Atlantic Ocean, from there it only took a, a decade or, or two to really completely infest all five of the, the Great Lakes and wipe out the native fish populations. Specifically, one of the, the research projects that we have underway is um, trying to develop a, a tool where we can selectively pass fish. So right now we're actually using one of the, um, the Woosh Innovations uh, scanning devices and we're traveling around to uh, various locations around the Great Lakes working with uh, state management agencies, collecting uh, the fish and collecting images of those fish. Uh, those images are then going to be used to okay. develop an, an algorithm where we're, we're developing fish recognition technology, I guess you could say. Sea lamprey control has two primary methods. The first is to use barriers and dams to keep adult sea lamprey from reaching spawning habitat. Where larvae are produced, there's a lampricide, which is a compound that specifically kills larval sea lamprey that's applied. and. Uh, removes larval sea lamprey from the streams before they metamorphose and go out into the lakes and kill fish. So here we're sorting according to male and female. So the females, uh, the way we can tell, is of course they're full of eggs, uh, from 60 to 80,000 eggs in there. And then the male is uh, a tighter belly and a dorsal rope. On the top, there's a good example of one right there. The work we're researching is whether or not we can reduce reproduction. So the males come in from the trap sites, and we make sure that all the males are sorted from the females, so we're only injecting males. They then get transported inside the facility where they're injected with a chemosterilant. If we just kill the female and we release the sterile male. The reason we fin clip the animals is so we can tell they're sterile. If we catch a lamprey in a trap and it has fin clips, then we release it because it's, uh, it's on our side. So this is the, the top fin here. This is the tail fin. These animals are our secret agents or double agents. They don't know they're sterile. And when we release them, they go out and find the females in these huge river systems. It would be extremely hard for people to go out and find these animals. But these males are doing all the hard work for us and they, they don't even know it and they don't need to know it. 
it's a very humane way for them to finish their life in some ways. That's a little, there we go. All right, that's a bigger one. Oh, it's so slippery. <laughs> When sea lamprey first in Great invaded the Great Lakes, many people suggested, have you considered actually fishing for sea lamprey? Maybe people would be willing to eat them. But unfortunately, that method failed for multiple reasons. People in the Great Lakes region simply didn't have the palate for sea lamprey. Now, interestingly, sea lamprey are considered a delicacy in other parts of the world. Spain and Portugal, you could find sea lamprey on a menu as the high dollar market price item. So many people ask, will a sea lamprey attack me while I'm out swimming in the Great Lakes or in one of the streams? And the answer, thankfully, is no. Sea lamprey can tell the difference between warm and cold-blooded organisms. We are warm-blooded, and the fish that sea lamprey feed on are cold-blooded. Most sea lamprey would swim very quickly away if they came near a human. The fishing economy is very valuable to the Great Lakes region. It's a part of our way of life within the Great Lakes. And that way of life, the Great Lakes as we know them, would not be as they are today had it not been for sea lamprey control.